Hello guys, what's up and welcome to the new tutorial from the uh, SketchUp Arc Studio. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can create this realistic balcony design in Enscape for SketchUp. So let's get to work. First of all, I want to show you overview of this file. So I'm going to zoom out and you can see what really happened in here. We have some simple box design in here, which is our balcony. And this is the environment that we have in here, which is completely normal. So I'm going to show you how we can work with this environment for realistic rendering. First of all, I'm going to move my camera in here. I'm going to press F, click on the create view in here, orbit in my environment like that. And now it's really important to set out our rendering angle and shot for this project. First of all, you can download this file below this video and train it step by step by this video from SketchUp Argus Studio. So I'm going to unlink visual preset for this rendering here. And I want to rename the cat name to the render number one, something like that. I want to add it to my favorite render, so I'm going to turn on the star icon in here. My X position is about 8.28. My Y is my eye height, so 9.6 is enough for here. And the Z is about negative 3.7. If I want to play with the pitch option, I can turn the pitch to the zero. And now I have some straight camera shot for my rendering. The Y is about 98. If I increase it to the 100, you can see what really happened inside your render. So try to manage it by your own self what you want from your rendering. We have some position in here. If I uncheck this option, some will be disappear for me in the setting. So I want to turn it on. And we have azimuth and altitude, which I want to talk about it, what they doing. If I play with the azimuth, you can see what really happened and sun direction will be completely changed and altitude is about daytime in here, which you can see it like that. So I want to hold shift and RMB, move my cursor and you can see what really happened. We can create different type of shadows and sun shades for our rendering. So I think it can be really nice. I want to set out some type of sun position which I can turn brighter this place more and more, which is my wall panel in here. Some type of wood material created it. So I'm going to hold shift RMB and play with the time of the day. Something like that can be good. For example, maybe 7 a.m. So altitude for the 7 a.m. is about 15.1. And azimuth is the sun direction. So if I hold Ctrl plus U and I keys on my keyboard, I can change it like that very simple and easy. Realistic renders have the uh, environmental shadows like these trees, lifts on different type of surfaces in interior or exterior. So I need to add some type of shadow which is completely normal for this project. I'm going to hold Ctrl, U and I and play with it. Maybe something like that can be really useful for our 3D job. So azimuth is about 345 or 44 degree. And I'm going to click on the create in here. If I click on the render number one this place, I can come back to the uh, normal mode, which I created by the view management. So this part is over. If this tutorial is useful for you, please like this video. So the story is continued. I'm going to click on the uh, visual setting in here and start my rendering. First of all, in here, I'm going to turn on the save frame. And now I have some frame like that. So I'm going to start my job with the field of view. I'm going to reduce field of view as I can. Some type of angle like this can be really wonderful. 60 degree on the horizontal line can be really useful for this project. So uh, I have some environmental problem, which is related to the HDRI sources. Before I continue my rendering setting, I need to go to the output. Resolution is good. File format is good. So come back to the skybox in here. And now I want to change the source of it from white ground to some type of urban or some other things like town. I think town is much better. You can change it to the uh, mountains. It's completely related to you. It's completely depends on your taste and what you want from your rendering. I think something like town can be good. If I work with the rotation, 
I can change the rotation. For example, something like that is not bad. I can see the buildings and town sites. So 84 degrees enough for it. About the weather, we have clouds. So in this case, before I set out cloud setting, I want to come back to the main bar and start another rendering setting from here. First of all, go to the atmosphere and turn off the sun brightness. Something like that will happen. This type of setting only helps you to create some realistic balcony light. All right. I'm going to come back to the main bar after I reduce some brightness. And now I want to play with the exposure to make some realistic exposure about 56%. If I turn on the depth field, you can see some blurness in our environment and rendering shots. So I want to turn off autofocus, play with the focal point, and I can focus on this table and accessories plus this plant in here. So 5.72 is enough for me. And depth of field is about 9%. Now we have some normal focusing in our area. So uh, rendering quality can be increased to the ultra mode because I need to see all the lights and GI calculations. Outline is naturally important, but if you want to add it, you need to type, for example, 4 because we need some light outlines. So I'm going to press F. Edit render number one and I need to go to the left side a little bit so I need to increase the yeah, to the 99 and now it's much better so I'm going to click on the save option and now it's much fine than the other times. So click on the visual setting continue rendering in the main bar everything is done and now time for the image bar so I'm going to click on the image bar in this type of complicated scenes you need to turn on auto contrast. Auto contrast helps you to improve your rendering quality much better than the other times. If you need warm render, you can reduce color temperature and you can see what really happens. Some type of wonderful rendering calculation will be happening here, which related to the lighting. 4,000 Kelvina is enough, or maybe it's too high for it, maybe 4,900 Kelvin is enough. Saturation is about 101 because we have vegetations and I don't want to change the contrast of it. Motion blue related to the animation, so it's not really useful in here. Bloom is about 4, lens flare is about 29. Wignate can be increased and you can see what really happened. We will have some cinematic render, but in this case, I don't want to use it because I need some more bright and clear render. Something about 16% is enough. Chromatic aberration is zero. Go to the atmosphere, turn off the fog option. So in here we have some important and valuable duties. First of all, night sky brightness. It's totally unuseful in the daylight rendering, so skip it. Shadow sharpness related to the uh, these shadows in here. If I increase the shadow sharpness, you can see what really happened in your interior calculation. I want to use it because I think it can be really attractive for this render. So next item, shadow sharpness is about 94. Next item is the artificial light brightness. I have only one spotlight in my SketchUp environment, this one. But we can't see the light and power of it because right now we are in the daylight. But if you want to see how much it can be powerful, I can close this option in here, click on this light in here, click on the Enscape objects, look at these sofa place in here. If I increase luminance intensity as I can, you can see some changes will be happen only in here. So it's not realistic if I want to tell the truth because it's completely related to the night render, but I added only for calibrating my lighting so it's not really important and don't worry about it but if I come to the uh, visual setting in the atmosphere and if I increase artificial light brightness a little bit changes will be happen in your interior calculation 126 is enough ambient brightness can be increased to the 79 go to the uh, sky and now we have most vital setting in here clouds so in the cloud setting, 
I want to reduce the density, reduce the variety, and turn off Cyrus amount because I need clear sky. So control is not really useful. Everything is done. If I change the rotation to the 90 degree, this thing will be happen, but I don't like it. So 84 is enough. Output on the Ultra HD. Everything is fine in here. I check out all the details. Now time for the rendering. I will go to the main bar. Render number one. Main bar at the left side. So I want to increase exposure a little bit. About 63. Now it's much better. Now it's really wonderful than the other times. So uh, I'm going to close it in here. Click on the uh, Enscape Material Editor. Click on the uh, wood number 9 in here. It's related to the floor in here. If I decrease roughness, you can see what really happened and we have more reflection in our surfaces. You can see it like that, very simple and easy. You can see this rays and shadows. So I want to increase normal map to the 156 and roughness is about 26.4. Metallica is about 1 and Spectra is about 44. In the wood number 56, we have this panel in here. So I want to reduce the roughness another time to increase interior lighting intersections and interactions. So 13% is enough. Metallica is about 4 and Spectra is about 57. I want to add the tint color to my main texture, so I need to reduce image fade. 95 is enough. Close it. Maximize Enscape. Press F on your keyboard. Render number 1. And now, time for rendering. I'm going to click on the screenshot in here. Save it on my desktop with any name that I want. So, I'm going to press save. And rendering will be a start for me. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If this tutorial is useful for you, please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. But if you like this video, you help me a lot. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your valuable watching. And goodbye.